Okay, so these you're just going to have to memorize. Oh. I know. Cosine is the derivative of sine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. What's the derivative of tangents? Any guesses? Secant squared. Secant squared, Danny. Secant squared. What about, oh, what about cosecant? Cosecant. Negative cosecant times cotangent. That's a rough one. Let me, no, they don't give you these. these are so. Now look at, what about secant? See if you can figure out what secant would be based on the derivative of cosecant. Well, this is the same, right? Cosecant and cosecant, and then it's cotangent. Cotangent, close. It's just not negated. Uh, the frustrated ones always do. You. All right. Last one, cotangent. Cotangent. That's negative cosecant squared. So look at if there's a cosecant in the derivative, it's a negative. If there's a secant in the derivative, it's positive. In fact, if it begins with a C, the derivative of it, the derivative, the der derivative, the derivative of it will be negative. Begins with a C, negative. Begins with a C, negative. Begins with a C, negative. All right? And now, because we know these, or we have them in front of us, we will know them. We can use them for other stuff. All right? X. Now, what rule do I use here? You are multiplying these things together, so you use the product rule, right? The product rule is, is the first times the derivative of the second. So I got to do d, d, x, sine of x. Plus the second, plus you, times the derivative of the first. And if you get good at this, you don't have to write the d over dx sine of x. You can just put the derivative there. Okay? So, I've got x squared. What's the derivative of sine? Cosine. Cosine of x. Plus sine of x times? What's the derivative? Yeah, 2x. Now, please, that 2 and x should be in front of sine of x. Don't just multiply it by the x. That would be incorrect. So, x squared cos of x plus 2x sine of x. And that right there is the derivative. That's it. That's it. So once you know the derivatives are of trades, there's no calculations for it. You just put it in. That's the beautiful part. Now, jerk. Yes, there is a math term called jerk. It is the sudden change in acceleration. Therefore, it is the derivative of acceleration. So, once I get acceleration, I get the derivative of that, and that's jerk. Now, you know what that is? If I'm on a roller coaster, and I'm about to start going forward, what's the first thing that happens when it starts? It's not pretty good, right? Yeah. Nah, okay, jerks with hat, right? Your head snaps back, you need a neck brace for about a week and a half. The ride is great. So, even though you're accelerating forward, the jerk is knocking your head back. If there is a jerk behind you, there might be. So what we're going to do is this. Acceleration due to gravity is this right here. Negative 9.8 meters per second squared. 9.8, yeah, because it's gravity. That's for change, right? Which means acceleration is really this numerically, right? So what is the jerk of a... What is the jerk... 
because you know, I was waiting for someone to just call some mistake. I said, what's the jerk? You know, what's the jerk of a classic? What's the derivative of a classic? Is that right? No, because otherwise every time we walk, gravity will be kind of, that's why we're not walking around like, you know, weird people. Okay? Yeah, because they can experience, no, they're just guys. <laughs> so, no jerk explains why we don't experience motion sickness while we're just sitting around here. Gravity, you'd be sitting, gravity's going to apply to you, and... <laughs> Blah! Boom, someone throw up, jeez. Then I can forget the jerk. I just throw up in the garbage can, will you please? So, there we go. There is no jerk on gravity, that's why we don't get nauseous, just by being on the earth. And in that new Drake video, I think he's experiencing jerk. Oh, no, no, no. What? Yeah. All right, well, let's let's let's, let's, let's get that. My fault for veering. My fault. Jerk. Jerk of a simple harmonic motion. All right. Five cosine t. Harmonic means this was over and over and over again. Right. That's what harmonic means. So, if this is the position. What's the velocity? Don't I have to take the derivative of that? Now, my derivative rules tell me if this is a constant, I can pull this 5 out, take the derivative of just this, and then put the 5 back into that. That's constant rule, okay? So what's the derivative of cosine of t? It's 5 times negative sine of t, which would be negative 5 sine of t. There you go, that's velocity. Now, what's acceleration? I need to take the derivative of velocity. Right? This right here is the same thing as taking the derivative of position. This is the derivative of velocity. So it's negative 5 times what's the derivative of sine? Cosine t. Therefore, I'll running out of room here, it's negative 5 cosine t. That's the acceleration. Now what's jerk? Jerk is the derivative of acceleration. So that's negative 5 times the derivative of cosine, which is what? Negative sine. And watch the fun. Negative times a negative? That is the jerk. Which is what? If I take the derivative of jerk one more time, what do I end up with? So, what? We end up with the position formula, don't I? I have a position formula. Oh my god, am I not recording this? Oh, I am, thank god. <laughs> so, if I take a derivative of jerk, 5 was a, a derivative of sine, it's cosine, isn't it? Oh my god. 5 cosine would be right back here. That's how it's harmonic. It goes over and over and over again. It just cycles through. Why does that 5 become a 0? Why can I pull the 5 out? It's a good question. Because if I didn't, what would happen? If I actually use the product rule, I take the first, which is 5, times the derivative of the second, which is cosine of t, and I get this, right? Negative 5 times sine of t. And then plus the second, cosine times the derivative of the first, the derivative of 5. Zero. Oh, what's it up? See what I'm saying? I should have written that to explain it so someone went, went back and watched. Like, yeah. But, you get it, right? Yes, Mr. Mr. Thank you. <laughs> Find the equation of the tangent line of the uh, function f of x equals tan of x over x right at x equals 2. Well, instead of using f of x plus h minus f of x over h, we know the tangent line slope can just be the derivative, right? Low d high minus i d low. Draw a line square below. So, low. High. So it's low times the derivative of high. What is the derivative of tan? Nice. Secant squared. 
low d high minus high, tan of x, d low. What's the derivative of x? Just one. Just one. Draw a line and square below, right? So I take, what's the low and I square that? That is the derivative. That's the derivative of f of x. Now, they want to know at 2. Two and secant squared of two minus the tan of two all over two squared. You would need the calculator to put that in to get an actual number. You would need, but there's no secant button on the calculator. So what do you think I put for a secant? One over cosine of secant is one over cosine of secant. So if I were to put that in the calculator, I would have to know that for right here, I'd put one over cosine squared of two. You're going to have to because in the calculator you can't put a two next to the cosine. So you would have to in the calculator actually put cosine two with the other parentheses and then square it, and then you get an actual decimal. Right. I wouldn't expect you to do something like that. I mean, they might give you like 90 degrees, which you should be able to do. 180 degrees, whatever. I need to find the second derivative of the function secant x. Well, in order to get the second derivative, I need to find the first derivative. What is the derivative of secant? It's secant of x times tan of x. So, bear with me for a second, I know, I know, sorry. The second derivative would be what? First times the derivative of the second, plus second times the derivative of the first. So it's first times the derivative of the second. What's the derivative of the tangent? Secant squared of x plus the second tangent of x times the derivative of the first. What's the derivative of the secant? Secant times tangent. They're my axes. So, this is really secant cubed of x plus secant of x tangent squared. So you see, when I distribute this in, I got tangent squared. When I distribute that in, it's secant cubed. And there you go.